in Washington. The Prime Minister has a packed day of meetings in London. Justin Trudeau is talking trade right now with British PM Theresa May. After that meeting, Trudeau heads straight to Buckingham Palace for a private audience with the Queen. CBC's Hannah Thibodeau is traveling with the Prime Minister. She joins me live from, are you outside 10 Downing Street there, Hannah? No, actually, I am in front of Buckingham Palace. That's right, you I can see it so. over my shoulder here. I want yeah, to ask, yeah, I, I ask just about... actually ran from 10 Downing oh, did Street. You? Okay, I want to ask you about 10 Downing because the talks yeah. should wrap up there very shortly. What was on sure. the agenda between the two prime ministers? Well, they just went in. As I was just mentioning, I was just over at 10 Downing Street. That is where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is sitting down to meet with one of his biggest allies, uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May. They just walked into the front door. They'll sit down. They'll have discussions. And one of the big discussions, of course, will be post-Brexit. What happens when the uh, UK separates from the EU? Because right now, Canada has a big trade deal with the European Union. It's called CETA. So... What the UK is hoping for is to quickly have a deal with Canada because they want to ensure and keep certainty with businesses who invest in Canada, Canadian businesses that invest here in the UK. They don't want to have that uncertainty that could be bad for the economy. So what they're saying is that they will start formal negotiations as soon as Brexit is complete, and that is next March. That's a lot of the discussion. So they have these informal talks leading up to the official Brexit next year. That's a big part of the discussions, but also they'll be discussing Syria, the strikes that the UK was officially a part of, the UK, the US, as well as France. And Canada has strongly supported those strikes uh, to try to keep the Assad regime under control and stop using chemical weapons against his people. And finally, another discussion that they're likely to uh, talk about is Russia, because remember, Canada expelled four Russian diplomats and and that's because of the uh, agent attack that happened in Salisbury, UK, which was widely believed to be the Russians. Those are just a sampling of some of the discussions that they are likely having currently at this moment. And uh, Trudeau meets with Queen Elizabeth this hour as well. It is an official meeting, his third since becoming Prime Minister. Any details, yes. Hannah? Just a few details. You know, if we stood here long enough, we might see Prime Minister Justin Trudeau drive down this road beside me because you can see over my shoulder here, Buckingham Palace. That is where the official audience with Queen Elizabeth will take place. This is his third official audience with Queen Elizabeth, the monarch. Uh, the first one was shortly after he became Prime Minister in 2015, so in November 2015. Then he met her in uh, Sol in in, uh, new in Edinburgh, Scotland, that was last year. When he was there with her, he actually presented her with the official flag that flew on top of the Peace Tower for Canada's 150th celebrations. Uh, that's one of the big things. So there's questions about what the discussion will be like. And this morning, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had mentioned to the BBC that he said he'll talk about any type of world discussions that she wishes to talk about. But also, she likely will do a check-in on what's happening in Canada. But one of the things, and I don't know if you've been talking about it on News Network today, her beloved Corgi passed away yesterday. And this is a Corgi with 14 generations of lineage. She got her first one from her father when I think she was just eight years old. So maybe he'll even be passing on his condolences about the beloved Corgi to the Queen. But we will ask later what the type of discussions they had because the cameras can go in for the first little bit, but they can't go into Queen Elizabeth's official apartment to pick up that whole conversation because that conversation is private unless the PM decides to share some of that with us. Hannah, uh, you know, pets can be so such a big part of the family. I'm sure that will come up and we'll hear about it afterwards as well. Um, but I just want to confirm before I let you go, are you doing a Q&A with our viewers? Yes, I am. Excellent. So here's the thing. I usually work in Ottawa, but I'm here in London, England, standing outside of Buckingham Palace. I've been following the Prime Minister on his three-country, three-continent tour over the past, I don't even know how long it's been now, but a very short period of time. So if you have any questions about Lima, Peru, Paris, or even here in London and what you expect, 
send me a, a note on Facebook and we will get those questions and try to answer as many as we can. So Facebook Live, YouTube, and I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> we'll try to answer all your questions. I know how busy you are and people will love to talk to you. Thanks for that, Hannah. So just to remind you, that is going to live stream. It's a Q&A on CBC News Facebook and YouTube. It is starting right now, so you can log on to facebook.com slash CBC News or youtube.com slash CBC News. Hannah's standing by. She is waiting for your questions. Take advantage. True Okay, now that I am done with my official news network hit with Sue Hannah Marchand on CBC News, we are going to continue on with the Facebook Live. So, we are on Facebook, we are taking questions on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any questions you might have about the Prime Minister's trip. This is an eight-day, three-continent, three-country tour. In fact, uh, let me just go through how we've been traveling over the past little bit because it's kind of interesting. We are waiting for some questions from you. We went to Lima, Peru last Thursday, and that was for the Summit of the Americas. We left Ottawa, and then all of a sudden we found out we had to go back to Ottawa after the summit in Lima, Peru, because Prime Minister Justin Trudeau decided to sit down with the premiers of British Columbia as well as the premier of Alberta to discuss the Trans Mountain Pipeline issue. Big problem. We went back to Ottawa, then we left for Paris. It was an official visit, the first official visit by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to France, and in fact, he was the first Canadian. Prime Minister to speak before the French National Assembly. That happened yesterday. And then now I am here in London, England, on the Mall. Right behind me is Buckingham Palace. And in fact, currently Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is sitting down with one of Canada's biggest allies. Uh, that is the British. And he's sitting down with British Prime Minister Theresa May, currently over at 10 Downing Street. Now, hopefully we're up long enough and we'll be able to show you this. But Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his entourage will drive down the mall, and that is where you'll see him go in. We probably won't be able to see it. We'll get you those videos as soon as we can, though. And he'll travel down here. He'll go to Buckingham Palace and have a private audience with the Queen. Now, I see some questions are coming in. I'll come back and do a little bit more explaining if you start to slow down. But let me take some questions from viewers. Have to wear my glasses. Can't read without them. Okay. Donnie Mc... Donnie McLeod comments, why are we about to purposely hurt the pocketbooks of fellow Canadians for, for oil companies uh, to make more money? Okay, so this is something that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was talking about, as I mentioned, when he made that pit stop back in Ottawa to talk about the Trans Mountain Pipeline, because he did suggest that the pipeline will be going through. Of course, British Columbia, the Premier of British Columbia has a uh, court case and it's delaying all the pipeline from moving forward. So Kendra Morgan said to the Canadian government, look, find a way to solve this or we are just going to stop right now. So they have to come up with some sort of plan by May 31st, the federal government. So what Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said, <coughs> excuse me, is that they will look at introducing legislation but also Finance Minister Bill Morneau is sitting down with Kinder Morgan to look at some type of financing. They didn't go into details of that, but it sounds like it could be taxpayer money that would go in to give that security if they do go ahead with this. <clears throat> so I think that is the question that you wanted answered is why. That's the reason why is that they're trying to put some security behind the pipeline to show that they are doing something so that they can move forward on it because the federal government fully believes that this pipeline has to go through as well as Alberta, BC, not so much. Um, and then also, of course, today, outside of uh, our hotel, right across the street, is the Canadian, what's it called? The Canadian, <coughs> pardon? Yeah, the Greenpeace, but what's the building right across? The Canada House. Canada House is right across. <laughs> I'm talking to producers here, the cameraman. It's like, what's the name of that building right across from our hotel? It's called Canada House, right across from Canada House. 
there was a Greenpeace protest that went on and they built this long fake pipeline in front of it to protest the fact that they don't want to see the pipeline going through. And when Prime Minister Justin Trudeau came out of there today, <coughs> he, um, in fact, was getting grilled by these protesters. They called the, uh, the oil coming out of there, crude oil, um, referring to Trudeau, I have to get water. I have been running around this city all day and talking for this long. This is what happens to reporters. Usually we do quick little stand-ups, but I'm gonna take a quick drink of water. Then there are people who walk right down the street and talk on their phones. Okay, so my apologies for that. This is what happens when you continually talk forever. So I wanna thank you for that question about pipelines. And yes, the pipeline issue has followed him right across the ocean to uh, here in London. So, okay, here's an interesting question. It's a little bit facetious. However, I am gonna answer it. <coughs> Lots of people are asking what Trudeau is wearing. So, I think you are referring to his last international trip where the Prime Minister wore a lot of traditional Indian costumes and it, a lot of people took notice that he was wearing them almost every day. So on this trip, there are no real cultural events. He also is not traveling with his family. Uh, it's a lot of business and he is wearing suits. He's wearing suits and ties. I can't really tell you what color ties, but I think I, that's what you're referring to is the fact that on that India trip, he took a lot of heat for what he was wearing. Um, and I think that comes from Linda Nichols. So Linda, thank you for that question. <coughs> I'm really sorry for the coughing. So uh, here's a question from Ashfaq. Khan, and my apologies if I'm not pronouncing your name right, what is the main agenda of this meeting? Now, I think you're talking about the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. I'm not 100% sure, or if you're talking about the meeting with the Queen, I am going to go with the Commonwealth, because you did not answer specifically. But if you heard me and you want to know about the Queen, please text me back. <coughs> so, Mr. Khan, the... Uh, Part of this meeting, they hold the Commonwealth heads of government every two years. There are 53 Commonwealth countries that represent about 2.6 billion people. And what they do is they come together with common goals. Uh, for this meeting, they are looking at a, a bunch of different issues. Uh, in particular, it's the common goals together. So if I can find in my notes exactly what's happening during it. Uh, so. <laughs> Essentially, the 53 countries, the theme is co called towards a common future. Uh, they have what they call four pillars, and the four pillars are fairness, sustainability, prosperity, and security. So those are the types of things that you'll see discussed at the Commonwealth. But one of the other things that has been in the news or maybe not um, in the official agenda by any means is who will head the Commonwealth after the Queen passes. And that's something that's a little bit sensitive. Uh, however, it's not necessarily going to be the Queen and the Commonwealth heads of government will make that decision as to who it will be. So n not the Queen, but whoever takes over, will it be Prince Charles? So that's one of the discussions that might happen on the sidelines, but they keep it very quiet because it's one of those things that is a little bit uncomfortable to talk about. Uh, let's go on. So Mr. Khan, thank you for that question. So Rodney Runnels asked, wondering about the pipeline protest over there. Um, pipeline protests are happening just a block this way. It's near the infamous Trafalgar Square. Again, I mentioned that it was um, just across the street from us. It's Greenpeace. They unfurled a big, <coughs> excuse me, banner. And they're protesting again, the advancement of the Kinder Morgan pipeline. So it's interesting that that hot topic, that debate landed right here in London because of course the Prime Minister when he went to Lima, Peru, before he went, he was asked, his officials were asked, would he change his mind and not go on this trip, this three country tour? The question was the answered by saying absolutely not, he will continue on the tour. But then when we were about to take off on Thursday, 
The Prime Minister got on the plane and literally as we are taxiing off, they said, hold on a second, we will be coming back to Ottawa for that, we called it a summit of sorts. <coughs> a summit of sorts for the Trans Mountain Pipeline because it's a huge issue. In fact, the Premier of Alberta has called it a constitutional crisis and something that the Prime Minister needs to deal with. So he did go back. He tried to deal with it. He did say that they're going to introduce legislation. The finance minister is sitting down with Kinder Morgan to likely give some form of financial assistance or guarantee so that if the pipeline can't go forward, then the company won't get financially penalized. In fact, it's kind of a backing so that that money would be there and the company would feel comfortable going forward with the pipeline. So those are the types of protests that are happening here. Rodney, I wanna thank you for your question. Um, so Parmdeep Gill asks, were there other protests against other world leaders? <coughs> and I'm really sorry for coughing, but literally I have been running around the city. Thank you. That's cameraman Ed. You can come in anytime you want. Look, let's show you how kind he is. He Hello. came to give me <laughs> a drink of water because I'm standing here coughing. Literally, I'm running around this city and talking this long is a bit difficult. So let me go back to the questions. I'm so sorry about this. So let's go, were there other protests against other world leaders? I'm following Prime Minister Justin Trudeau around. So sometimes it's hard to see if there are other protests against other world leaders. At this point, the Commonwealth Heads of Government start tomorrow. At this point, I have not seen any. If I see any, I'll tweet them out. So follow me at Hannah Thibodeau, and I will tweet those out for you, Mr. Gill, and I thank you for your question because so far I haven't seen any. I'm gonna take a quick sip of water. Because that'll stop me from coughing. So yes, I will keep an eye out for that. All right. What is the main agenda? We had a question like that. Okay, Bella Green. She says, I sure hope the Queen Mother gives him, I'm assuming him is Justin Trudeau, a tongue lashing. Now she doesn't say what type of tongue lashing she wants him to receive for what topic. Um, however, she wants to know what they will be talking about. Again, let me just uh, fill you in on how this meeting works. These are official audiences with Queen Elizabeth. And when they go in, there is one camera. It's very tightly controlled. It's not even our camera from CBC News. It's a camera that is inside that is typically used for these types of events. They go in, the two go into a room together. We will put those pictures out as soon as we have them. They go into a room together and whatever they say quickly <coughs> for that, that gets captured. We will we'll broadcast that. The only thing we know from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is today he spoke on BBC and said that he will speak with her about whatever world events she wants to talk about. So I think she really does lead the discussion when it comes to these talks. She's had other Commonwealth heads of government in there today. Ed, the camera guy. Yeah. Hey, Ed. Hey. Was saying that he saw lots of other world leaders go past here today. See, we get information from everybody. Um, and what's interesting is that they can't go further into the Queen's apartment. That is very private. They don't allow cameras. They don't allow audio. So we don't know officially what that discussion is. It's private. Unless Prime Minister Justin Trudeau comes out and tells us anything, we will not know what those two discuss because the Queen is a very private person and she doesn't announce those types of discussions. So I want to thank you for that question, Bella Green. Ben Harper, what's the weather like in London? Okay, this is an easy one. I didn't know as a weather person, but Ed, is the weather typically like this? No, here. Two weeks ago, it was snowing. It was snowy. Okay, you couldn't hear what Ed said, but Ed is helping me out with this broadcast today. Ed's a fabulous camera person for us. He was saying two weeks ago, here in London, there was snow on the ground, kind of like what I think we're seeing in Ottawa right now. Yucky weather, but today it's plus plus 25 degrees it's very unusual there are buds on the trees you can see that they're about to 
pop. And that's my weather forecast for today. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Hot tomorrow. And also tomorrow? Hotter. Hotter tomorrow. Plus 27? Plus 27 tomorrow. That's the weather here in London. Thanks for asking. I think that was Rodney. Thanks, Rodney. Uh, no, that was Ben. That was Ben Harper. Thanks, Ben Harper. Are you Prime Minister, former Prime Minister, uh, Stephen Harper's son? His son is Ben Harper, the fella there. Okay. Okay, Bonnie Miller asks, this is a great question, Bonnie. This is from another part of our trip. Bonnie Miller asks, why did the French Assembly jeer and boo Prime Minister Trudeau? I was at the French Assembly when this happened. This is fascinating because it's not often that you hear some jeering and boos when there is another guest in their house. And this is the first time a Canadian Prime Minister has addressed the French Assembly. Not only that, this is the first world leader to address the French Assembly under French President Emmanuel Macron because he was only elected a year ago. So that's a very high standard and a very, it's just quite pleasant for the, the Prime Minister of Canada to have that honour. However, when he started talking about trade and the uh, CETA deal, remember, French has not, the France has not yet ratified CETA. He was pitching CETA very strongly and in fact it was the question that ended his whole speech and he was saying, look, we can have progressive trade with CETA, we can have uh, human rights, we can have good wages for workers, and we can protect the climate even if you have this big global trade. Well, there are some in the French Assembly who do not believe that. They believe that under CETA there are certain parts of it that would uh, make wages worse for workers, so it wouldn't be as, uh, the, hot, the pay wouldn't be as good, that the um, standards wouldn't be as good, but not only that, they feel that it would also hurt um, the environment in certain cases. So that's why they jeered and they felt, I spoke with one of them afterwards uh, and what she was, Danielle uh, Osama, uh, Obama, I, I, I forget her last name, but she was a member of the French Assembly. She was actually one of the ones who was jeering at the Prime Minister, so I asked her why she did that. She felt that he was coming there to be the salesman for the seat of trade deal, which, hey, you know, he is the Prime Minister of Canada and this is a big trade deal with Canada. So he, she felt that he shouldn't be up there selling this and she, didn't, she was disappointed in that part of the speech. To give him credit though, she did say he did like the rest of the speech. So that's what was happening. I did find it surprising though that they were making those noises and it was right below me. So I did hear it and I did see it and then I spoke with one of the members afterwards. So, you know what? I'm just taking a look here. We do see some traffic going through. So this may be Prime Minister Justin Trudeau coming for his audience, do you think? Yeah, we're keeping an eye on it. We're keeping an eye on it. We have people watching. We'll keep an eye out for that. Okay, so thank you for your question on that. So Daylene Lochner, so apologize Daylene if I mispronounced your name. Daylene uh, wants to know, does Sophie have an agenda while in London? Uh, Sophie, I'm assuming you're referring to the Prime Minister's wife, Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. None of the family are on this trip with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Uh, as we saw in India, the whole family went along, along with his wife. This time, though, he brought along quite a few cabinet ministers throughout the trip. We saw Foreign Affairs Minister Krista Freeland, Trade Minister Francois Philippe Champagne. Uh, we saw Environment Minister as well, Catherine McKenna. Those are just a few of the cabinet ministers who are traveling along with him. His wife isn't traveling, so no agenda for her while here in London. Thank you for your questions. A viewer on YouTube, how welcoming are the English towards Trudeau? Very good question. Thank you for your question. Viewer on YouTube, appreciate you watching. Um, I'd say they're pretty welcoming. Um, you don't see too much around because remember there are 53 Commonwealth heads of government who are in fact here, but to have the official audience with the Queen is a pretty big deal because not all heads of the Commonwealth uh, governments will get that opportunity. So I think they're pretty welcoming. Uh, let me ask my friends from London here. 
Do you, you love him. The British love him. Again, and the cameraman, so helpful. We'll have to introduce everybody after. <laughs> because you know what, this is a full production here. Um, so Ed says they're pretty welcoming. Just to be blunt, I landed here last night early in the morning. So I just have been running around and it seems like there are a lot of tourists here in London right now. It's a busy time of year. Uh, so yeah, Ed says they're very welcoming. They like to have him along. Uh, Here's a good question, and this is a question from Dennis Muller. Uh, Dennis Muller asked, how much did this trip cost the taxpayers? Again, a good question. I had this question as well before we left from Ottawa. This is something that we always use an A tip for. Our very intrepid reporter, Dean Beebe, who does access to information requests, always goes on and tries to find out if there are any abnormal costs when it comes to these type of trips. We won't know the exact cost of the trip until afterwards. Uh, just remember though that all of the media who are on board, their companies pay for that. Um, and another thing you might not know when it comes to the flight and the plane, those planes have to be flown regardless too because they have to get their, their flight time. So there are the costs and the plane is flown by Department of National Defense. Uh, pilots who are extremely professional, by the way. I got to sit in the cockpit last night and watch the plane take off from Paris. And you see these, uh, these pilots in there. They're so professional. Oh, we lost a light, but that's okay. They're so professional and it just is so smooth. So they're professionals who are paid by the Department of National Defense. However, we will be able to tell you the cost of this. It just won't happen right now. If you can see, look, Ed is the master of everything. Light went out, battery, this is what happens on TV. Again, I think Ed is becoming the star of this show. Levi is now behind the camera, which will bring him in too. He's keeping an eye out for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. So these are the types of things that happen when you're on TV. This is a longer one, it's more fluid. We're just kind of gabbing. Uh, you're getting a little bit of the background, but this is, these are the types of things that happen when we're out in the field anyway. You see the batteries go out. Ed, the camera guy, magnificent, not only producer pa passing along information, but fixing the camera. Levi's keeping an eye out for when the Prime Minister comes down the road here. However, we will continue to take your questions. So Dennis Mahler, thank you for that. I'm sorry I can't give you the exact answer at this point in time, but we will eventually get that. Those prices always come through and we always check on them. Uh, da, 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 da. So. Miles Ruiz Bars, again, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Will Justin Trudeau discuss with the British Prime Minister, you say Elizabeth May, but I think you mean Theresa May, the validity of the intelligence used to justify recent strikes on Syria. Let me just remind you one thing the Prime Minister and his government has said is that they do believe that they have the proof to show that they were chemical attacks in Syria. So that's why he says that he backs the US, France and Britain for those strikes against in retaliatory, retaliatory strikes on Syria. Whether he will ask that question of her, he probably will. They all have had discussions beforehand and the prime minister said that he and his officials had the heads up that these strikes were coming. So. I'm sure before those strikes happened, I hope they would have had the proof that chemical weapons were used. So the question is, the, the answer is likely yes. I think they would have that discussion. Um, so I wanna thank you for that, Miles Ruiz Bars. Um, so I want to thank everybody for asking a whole bunch and a variety of questions. You can hear helicopters flying in the sky. Remember, that's because there are 53 heads of government here for the Commonwealth Heads of Government. That begins tomorrow. We're still waiting for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to drive down this road to go have his official audience with Queen Elizabeth. But of course, I want to thank you for taking the time and sending your questions on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter. It's much appreciated. And continue to watch CBC News Network because we will have all the latest, the photographs from the Queen, uh, the details from 
the Prime Minister Theresa May's meeting and of course listen to CBC Radio because I'll have a report a little bit later on that. Again, thank you for your time. Thanks to Ed and to Levi as well. They're a huge help and always appreciate that. Thanks guys.